Well, when Dan Bedotti went to the press conference and asked if this could be a false flag event and mentioned InfoWars, it caused a surge in traffic both to InfoWars and to people who are looking to find out information about false flags. And our newest edition of the magazine has a lot of information about false flags. As a matter of fact, it's the cover story. It's a history of false flags. And if you look at it, it goes over, it says, why government should be the first suspect in any terror attack. And there's a good reason for that. Because going back all the way to Nero, it starts out with Nero, goes back to the Spanish-American War, World War I, the, the pretense for starting World War I, Hitler's uh, justification for invading Poland, uh, the prelude to World War II, uh, Israeli false flags, a very important one right here, Operation Northwoods. That essentially, this one right here, um, before the Kennedy assassination, Kennedy stopped that, but it is a declassified document that basically has the same type of civilian terrorism that we saw in 9-11 and also in the Boston bombing suggested to be used to demonize Cuba and as a pretext for invading Cuba. And then, of course, we have the Gulf of Tonkin in the Vietnam War. Uh, that was used to justify our involvement in Vietnam. And if you don't believe us, you can look at Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara's statement on a movie called The Fog of War, where he admits that the Gulf of Tonkin did not take place, that it was something that they hyped up, that uh, they used it as a pretext to go to war, and it wasn't that the U.S. was attacked. They just used that story to make that, uh, to give a justification for going into the Vietnam War. So that's why we believe whenever uh, there's an incident like this that is going to be used to try to change domestic society in a fundamental way as they did after 9-11, we should look very carefully at the events surrounding it and especially looking to see if there's a drill going on. That's one of the hallmarks of modern false flag terrorism. Now other people have followed what we've said. Uh, one of them is Representative Stella Trimbley. We'll be talking to her in just a minute. And when she mentioned that, uh, she was, came under withering attack in the media. She was even compared to Tamerlan Tsarnaev by the Huffington Post. They said that uh, she and Tamerlan were both reading from Infowars and uh, essentially implying that all of us are terrorists, just like Tamerlan Tsarnaev. And that's very troubling considering the fact that he was convicted in the media and by the government without really having a trial, without really having an examination of the facts, just making the assertion that he was a terrorist, that they acted alone, the two brothers, and that was the end of the story. And that's largely been bought by most people in this country, except those who are looking at false flag terrorism. So we have an interview with uh, Representative Trimbley coming up here, and she's taken a lot of abuse for this, and we want to talk to her about her experience with that. Representative Trimbley, thank you for joining us. Alex, thank wanted, you. Alex wanted to commend you for uh, standing up and asking some questions. I don't know uh, when it became a virtue to not, not try to find out what the truth is in a given event. And when we see things that are not adding up, I think uh, most people would want to ask why. Well, um, may I make a comment first? Sure. I would like to every, let everyone know that I... Uh, I'm not representing the Republican Party of New Hampshire. I'm here as an individual. Mm -hmm. And that I never stated that I did not have any sympathy for the victims. Oh, absolutely. On the, yeah. on the contrary, it, those who really want to find out what happened, and they're so, in, it's so important to find out, we need to get to the truth. That's basically what, what I'm calling for, a complete investigation. Um, not with the FBI involved, because as uh, Howie Carr says in Boston Radio, you cannot put the wolf in charge of the hen house and expect truth and a full report to come out. Absolutely. You know, I, I think it's something that we've said here is that you want to make sure that justice is done. And justice is done means that you get everyone who's involved, that you get the full story, that you don't just uh, find somebody that you can quickly arrest and say, that's it, that's the end of the case. We want to know what the entire story is. And the concern that we have is that it looks at this point like it's very doubtful it's going to go to trial. So there's not going to be the kind of discovery that you would typically have in a trial. And yet everybody seems to have just decided that this is a done deal. They're guilty because the government says so. And I find that to be very troubling. It's almost like we had the NDAA uh, being 
put into effect by the media. Nobody, you know, just the mere accusation from the government is enough to make you guilty. And even our conservative uh, voices on, on the media are jumping on the bandwagon. They do not realize that when we scrub our first, uh, our, our rights of a uh, trial, uh, innocent until proven guilty, we are setting a precedent for ourselves in the future. Does, Absolutely. People, do, does no one ever realize that? Everyone was so concerned about NDAA, and rightfully so, that the government could just label someone as a terrorist and then uh, do an extraordinary rendition to another country or send them to Guantanamo or something like that. And yet, what we see here is that the government, on just the flimsiest of evidence, actually no evidence at all, uh, at, at this point, they have not shown a video even of the younger brother setting the bag down as it's been alleged that he did. The governor said he was very convinced by the evidence, but he was never even shown the video that the FBI claims that they have. All we've seen is a picture of the two brothers walking around the corner of a building, and that is enough to make these guys into terrorists from what we've seen. Well, if that can happen, anyone that uh, maybe is against the government and they find out about it could be walking anywhere and they can get framed so easily without absolutely. any trial. That absolutely. is absolutely unconstitutional and goes against every grain that all Americans should uh, absolutely uh, abhor. Absolutely. Yeah, that's our concern. I, you know, it broke today that Rob Lowe had uh, retweeted an article from the LA Times saying that no one, no funeral, uh, no burial place would accept the body of Tamerlane. And he commented after he linked to that article, he said, love it. And the only criticism that he got from people was that he was gloating over this and that perhaps he shouldn't be gloating over it. But everyone seems to accept the fact that if the government and the media accuses you, then you're guilty. I mean, basically, these guys were tried in the media, and I find it very disturbing that there's a lot of connections to them and to the CIA, for instance. We had Cybell Edmonds on, and she was talking about how Uncle Ruslan, who was the first one to throw their brothers under the bus, is the son-in-law of the former CIA head of Turkey in the Caucasus, which is where all of this is happening. She's very concerned that this is another false flag operation like Operation Gladio, which has been well documented by the Italian press. And uh, she says, based on her experience as an FBI translator in that area, that she believes that after the fall of the um, Soviet Union, when we no longer had a Cold War enemy, that they were looking for some new kind of enemy. And they shut down Gladio in Europe, but continued it in Turkey and the Caucasus as false flag terrorism. Well, I had never heard of false flag or black, black ops. I always swallowed whatever the media said uh, without even questioning. You're not supposed to look at any pictures except the ones that the FBI tells you to look at. Uh, that's the thing I find most amazing. You, you know, remember that press conference where they got out there and they said, here are the pictures of the brothers. Do not look at any others, but we need you as our eyes and ears. And it's like, well, there were so many people that were taking stills as well as photographs at the finish line, it seems like they would want to look through those pictures, but we're not supposed to look at those pictures. There's a lot of questions about what was happening at the, uh, at, at the finish line as well as the narrative about the brothers, even the fact that they had been telling everybody they were looking for black backpacks and the younger brother has a white backpack and they explain that as, well, he had a white backpack. Uh, on the outside and a black one on the inside, and he would leave that there and walk off with a white one. And it's like, well, if he's if he's that smart, why doesn't the older brother do the same thing? If that's uh, the technique, why would one of them do it and the other one not? I mean, there's just a lot of unusual things about the crime itself. But I guess one of the things that bothers me, as much as the details of the crime, is how it's being used to uh, essentially excuse a martial law takedown of the city. And I'm very concerned, and I want to hear what you think about this, I'm very concerned about that becoming a template, just as we saw no-knock SWAT team raids become a template after Daryl Gates uh, premiered them in L.A. Uh, it spread all across the country. And we've already had a couple of uh, militarized sweeps in other cities following this incident. But I think this is really, as some people have said, this is really the real drill was the uh, martial law. How do you feel about that? I feel that's correct. And I think that um, going for a um, 
a list that uh, you have to list your guns and where they are, that's a perfect example how they can come to your home once they know that you're registered and just completely come in and take your guns. And the other thing that I observed, if I may, uh, this article at, um, of Tim Rowan shows, I finally started to look at the pictures, and is it Carlo Alvarez, who said that uh, he was there helping Jeff Bo uh, Bowman? Mm -hmm. He said that he took his shirt off and he put, uh, he tried to stop the bleeding, which is a wonderful thing to do. But when you look at him, and he also said at the, this is on the article, you have to take the time to read the article. Uh, he also said that on the second, the first one, he said he could not see anything because there was so much smoke. But the first, he said, right after the, the, the smoke came out, he started, he made a picture, not took a picture of the, the, uh, the first victims that came out in a wheelchair. So the wheelchairs were already there. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And then the second, uh, uh, the second paragraph of the article, he said there was so much smoke that he could not see that he went up to the finish line where the photographers were higher up. Is there not a discrepancy there? I don't know these things, but these are questions I would like to get uh, answered and have the stories uh, put straight. Right. And it's in right. writing. So these are things that. Uh, I never looked at. You see, we're in a, a society that so much is happening, happening around us. We're so busy. We do not take the time because there is so much. I don't even believe the reporters sometimes have the time to thoroughly investigate because of this correction, as you saw. Right. Well, I guess the thing that really sticks out to me is, uh, and the thing that we were looking for from the very beginning, was whether or not there was a drill. That's why that was the first question that Dan Bedondi asked, I believe, was if there was a drill. And he could not get a definitive answer from that because what we've seen time and again is that if there is a drill going on at the same time, at the same place, with the same scenario, that is a hallmark of false flags because it creates confusion for first responders. Nobody knows if this is real or if it's a drill when something like that is happening. So uh, we had reports, eyewitness reports, saying that uh, there were bomb-sniffing dogs, that... Uh, uh, there was um, a, a whole slew of officers, both at the starting and at the finishing line. And we were told by the police chief himself that they had more people than ever before and they were paying special attention to the finish line. So all of that, as well as the way that it is used, all indicate that to us that it's a false flag because they're using it for an agenda. And I guess domestically the thing we're concerned about is this martial law agenda that we saw unfold in its wake in uh, Boston. Uh, to turn the whole city into a, a lockdown, essentially looking for this one kid who turned out to be uh, disarmed. And then the other thing we're concerned about, as Cybelle Edmonds was saying, was even an international agenda, something that could forward the cause of war with Syria and eventually Iran with this false flag terrorism. I don't know. Are you, how, how do you feel? Just We're almost uh, out of time here, but briefly, how do you feel about uh, the way the raid was conducted in terms of looking for this suspect? Well, here you have all these police officers. They have um, helicopters in the air that identify the Boston police, I believe, identified someone in a boat. And mm -hmm. yet uh, they're going and they were going to call it off. But yet they go around and knock on people's door and then treat them like criminals. Absolutely. Americans should not be able to stand for that. Yeah, I, I, it bothered me that... Uh... You had so many people, and I don't know if these are people who are actually rousted out of their house at gunpoint that were cheering USA, USA in the wake of that. Uh, that's the thing that we're very concerned about, is that people could embrace this kind of what we consider to be tyranny, violating all of the tenets of law enforcement and respecting people's homes and their privacy. Uh, not, you know, they said it was voluntary uh, for people to come out, but when somebody points a gun in your face and tells you to come out, and then calls out voluntary. That's kind of like the same kind of volunteerism that we see at the TSA at airports, isn't it? Exactly, and it's like uh, fear does terrible things to people, and they don't think logically. Mm -hmm. And the fear that I they think allegedly, perhaps some government element is behind this. When we're spending so much on defense, mm 
-hmm. is absolutely uh, astounding for people. It's very, very, um, it, it causes so much irrationality, well, and it did to me. And I guess the last thing is that uh, if you even follow the government's narrative that, uh, you know, that it, this is something that they can handle uh, with additional personnel, with additional funding, if we look at what they were saying with uh, the creation of Homeland Security, they needed to create a giant bureaucracy because there wasn't sufficient information sharing between the different agencies to catch these terrorists. And yet here we are 12 years after they created Homeland Security and they're using the same excuses. And we see that they've got an army of uh, police and other responders at the finish line, and yet they can't catch these guys that supposedly they've been tipped off about. So even if you accept the government's line that uh, uh, this all happened exactly the way they did, it seems to me like a real fool's bargain to say that you're going to trade off your liberties for security because they don't seem to be able to handle that. Well, coincidentally, I watched a program on Frontline, I think it was on April the 30th, and it was showing that there is a third party contract. A lot of, uh, there's a lot of money in espionage, apparently, and it's three times the size of the Pentagon, and it's all around Washington. They do not, they do not answer to con our Congress. Right, yeah. Well, it's a big, so that's it's a big another money. fearful. Absolutely. It's a, it's a big money-making uh, enterprise, just like the military-industrial complex that Eisenhower warned us about. Well, thank you so much for speaking out. Thank you for asking questions. Is there anything else that you would like to say briefly just before we end the interview? Those who remain silent, it will be it's to your detriment. We need to be alive and awake and ask questions. And if there's nothing there, that's fine. But please, be diligent. Get away from your telephones, I mean, your, uh, your television, and devote some time to learning about hist historical events, especially recently, so that we can really get a great investigation going, an honest and truthful one. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you so much for speaking out, Representative Trembley. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, what she said is exactly right. I can't think of anything that is more dangerous for us personally or for the society and the idea that we should just accept without question anything from the government, any story that they give us, no matter how implausible it seems, no matter how contradictory it seems, and no matter how many times they change it, we're supposed to just accept what they say. Well, we don't believe that's true. We question it. We do research. We have links to uh, documents that are online. And if you want to have a resource that will help you to convince people, take a look at our newest magazine. As I just mentioned, it goes into a history of false flags. And uh, you can pick that up in bulk, spread that around, or just get a copy and pass it to your friends and neighbors. Some people like to research stuff online. Some people want to only read print. So uh, we offer both of those things for you. And if you want to support our operation, please consider getting a Prison Planet TV membership. You can share that with up to 10 people. And that's another way that people can be woken up. Well, that's it for our broadcast. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources. With over 30 years of experience in the precious metals business, I can tell you without a doubt, we are facing the most dangerous and volatile times, not just in the United States, but worldwide. Peace of mind is gold and silver. Now is the time to invest in gold. When it comes to bullion coins, our prices are competitive and the closest to melt. If it's numismatics you're looking for, we have some of the best deals out there. Visit MidasResources.com today or go to Infowars.com and click on the link to see our daily specials. Here's an example of one of our long-term specials we've been offering for more than a year. Two silver dollars from the turn of the last century, plus two powerful films, The Obama Deception and The American Dream. We also add in the book Dishonest Money, all for $72 and free shipping. The most trusted name in precious metals is Midas Resources. Call 1-800-686-2237 or go to Infowars.com. I'm Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. 
We are now only entering the edge of a global financial superstorm, the likes of which the planet has never seen. Here in the United States, the private Federal Reserve is giving more than $85 billion of taxpayer money a month to themselves and other offshore foreign banks. And the worst part is, we have to pay the bank's interest on the money we give them. There is now a race between the global central bank mafia cartels to see who can devalue their country's currencies the fastest. We are already seeing big increases in inflation at the grocery store and the gas line. This will eventually lead to hyperinflation. More than a dozen top globalists like George Soros have been buying record amounts of gold while at the same time bad-mouthing it to the public. Don't just listen to what they say. Watch what they do. For more than 6,000 years of recorded human history, gold has been the ultimate hedge against uncertain times and inflation. Before investing in metals, it is important to do your own research and find a reputable company. Midas Resources has the highest Better Business Bureau rating of an A+. Unfortunately, very few precious metal companies can boast that. Midas Resources has assembled one of the most educated, researched, and professional teams of brokers in the industry. The evidence is overwhelming. In uncertain times, gold and silver is safe harbor. Now is the time to invest in gold. Call 800-686-2237 and Midas Resources will make you 10 reasons to own gold absolutely free. No shipping. It's absolutely free. And finally, Ted Anderson wants to challenge you to find any deal that comes close to his two silver dollars at cost with free shipping, with two free films and a book for $72. That's more than $160 value for $72 shipping included. Click the link at InfoWars.com to go to the MidasResources.com specials page. Brought to you by MidasResources.com and Ted Anderson the trusted name in precious metals.